And here we are going to talk about a uh, basic strategy, and that would be uh, based on similarity of users, and then predicting uh, the rating of an object by a uh, active user uh, using the ratings of similar users to this active user. This is called uh, a memory-based approach because it's a little bit similar to um, storing all the uh, user information and when we are considering a particular user we are going to try to uh, kind of retrieve the relevant users or the similar users to this user case and then try to use that uh, use the information about those users to predict the preference of this user. Uh, so here's the general idea and uh, we use some notations here. So x sub ij denotes the rating of object oj by user ui and n sub i is the average rating of all objects by this user. So this ni is needed because we would like to normalize the ratings of objects by this user. Right. So how do you do normalization? Well, we're going to just uh, uh, subtract the, the average rating from all the ratings. Now this is to normalize these ratings so that the ratings from different users would be comparable. Because some users might be more generous and they generally give you know, high ratings uh, but some others might be more critical, so their ratings cannot be directly uh, compared with each other or aggregate them together. So we need to do this normalization. Now the prediction of the rating uh, on the item by uh, another user or active user u sub a here uh, can be based on the average ratings of similar users. So the user u sub a is the user that we are interested in recommending items to. And we now are interested in recommending this uh, o sub j. So we're interested in knowing how likely this user will like this object. Now, How do we know that? Well, the idea here is to look at the, uh, whether similar users to this user have liked this object. So mathematically, this is to say, well, the predicted rating of this user on this app, uh, object, user A on object uh, OJ, is basically combination of the normalized ratings of different users. And in fact, here we are taking a sum over all the users, but not all users contribute uh, equally to the average. And this is controlled by the weights. So this weight controls the influence of a user on the prediction. And of course, naturally, this weight should be related to the similarity between UA and this particular user UI. The more similar they are, then the more contribution we would like a, uh, user UI to make in predicting the preference of UA. So the formula is extremely simple. You can see it's a sum of all the possible users and inside the sum we have their ratings, well their normalized ratings as I just explained. The ratings need to be normalized in order to be uh, comparable with each other. And then these ratings are weighted by their similarity. So you can imagine uh, W of A and I is just a similarity of user A and user I. Now what's K here? Well, K is simply a uh, normalizer. It's just, the, uh, it's just one over the sum of all the weights of all the users. And so this means basically if you consider the weight here together with K, and we have coefficients or weights that would sum to one for all the users. And it's just a normalization strategy so that you get this predicted rating in the same range as the, uh, these 
uh, ratings that we use to make the prediction, right? So this is basically the main idea of memory-based uh, approaches for collaborative filtering. Right? Once we make this prediction, we also would like to map back uh, to the rating that the user um, the user uh, would actually make and this is to further add the uh, mean uh, rating or average rating of this user u sub a to the predicted value this would recover uh, a meaningful rating for this user so if this user is generous then um, the average would be somewhat high and when we add that the rating will be uh, adjusted to a relatively high rating now, when you recommend an item to a user, this actually doesn't really matter because you are interested in um, basically um, the normalized rating that's more meaningful. Uh, but when they evaluate these collaborative filtering approaches, they typically uh, assume the actual uh, ratings of uh, the user on these objects to be unknown, and then you do the prediction and then you compare the predicted ratings with their actual ratings. So they, you do have access to their actual ratings, but then you pretend you don't know, and then you compare your system's predictions with the actual ratings. In that case, obviously the system's prediction would have to be adjusted to match the uh, actual ratings of the user. And this is what's happening here, basically. Okay, so this is the memory-based approach. Now, of course, if you look at the formula, if you want to write a program to implement it, you still face uh, the problem of determining what is this W function, right? Once you know the W function, then the formula is very easy to uh, implement. So indeed, uh, there are many different ways to compute this uh, function or this weight W. And specific approaches generally differ in how this is computed. So here are some possibilities, and you can imagine there are many other possibilities. One popular uh, approach is to use the Pearson correlation coefficient. Uh, this would be a sum over uh, common rated items, and the formula is a standard Pearson correlation um, coefficient formula as shown here. So this basically uh, measures uh, whether uh, the two users tend to all give higher ratings to similar items or lower ratings to similar items. Another measure is the cosine measure, and this is to treat the rating vectors as um, vectors in the vector space. And then we're going to measure the, uh, the angle and compute the cosine of the angle of the two uh, vectors and this measure has been used in the vector space model for retrieval as well. So as you can imagine there are just many different ways of doing that. In all these cases note that the user similarity is based on their preferences on items and we did not actually use any content information of these items. It didn't matter you know, what these items are. They can be movies, they can be books, they can be products, they can be text documents. We just didn't care about the content. And so this uh, allows such approach to be applied to a wide range of problems. Now in some newer approaches, of course, we would like to use more information about the user. Clearly we know more about the user, not just uh, these uh, preferences on these items. Right? So in the uh, actual filtering system, using collaborative filtering, we could also you know, combine that with content-based filtering, we could use more context information, and those are all uh, interesting uh, approaches that people are still studying, and they, there are new approaches proposed. But this memory-based approach it, mm, has been shown to work reasonably well, and it's easy to implement, and in practical applications, this could be a starting point uh, to uh, see if the strategy works well for your application. So there are some uh, obvious ways to also improve this approach and mainly we would like to improve the user similarity measure. 
And there are some practical issues to deal with here as well. So for example, there will be a lot of missing values. What do you do with them? Well, you can set them to default values or the average ratings uh, of the user. And that would be a simple solution. But there are advanced approaches that can actually uh, try to predict those missing values and then use the predicted values to improve the similarity. So in fact, the memory-based approach, you can predict those, uh, those missing values, right? So you can imagine you have an iterative approach where you first do some preliminary prediction, and then you can use the predicted values to further improve the similarity function. Uh, uh, so this is a, a heuristic way to solve the problem. And the strategy obviously would affect the performance of collaborative filtering. Right? Uh, just like uh, any other heuristic, heuristic to improve these similarity functions. Another idea, which is actually very similar to the idea of IDF that we have seen in text search, is called inverse user frequency or IUF. Now here the idea is uh, to look at the, where the two users uh, share similar ratings. If the item is a popular item that has been uh, viewed by many people and uh, seeing these two people interested in uh, this item may not be so interesting. Uh, but if it's a rare item, it has not been viewed by many users, but uh, these two users viewed this item and they gave similar ratings and that says more about their similarity. Right? So it's kind of to emphasize more on similarity on items that are not viewed by many users.